Okay, so in this short video here, I want to show you how to use visual analysis to check a reinforced concrete beam design. This is the problem we had in class. It was a cantilever beam and with a distributed load on it. And if you remember from class, when we, fit, when we got the design done, we had a 12 inch wide beam by 24 inches deep, and we've got three number 11 reinforcing bars as the tension reinforcement up here at the top. Uh, just a quick note here. The, um, of course, in class, I didn't split out the dead and the live. Remember, superimposed dead load is the dead load on top of the self-weight. So if you see that, and I think your homework problems are, are similar, you have to then calculate the, the self-weight. Of course, you have to know the size. So first you do the design, then you can calculate the size, um, and then you can figure out what the self-weight is. So if you look here, to, in order to get the self-weight, I take the dimensions of the beam, 12 inches by 24 in inches. I multiply by the density of reinforced concrete, 150 pounds per cubic foot, do a unit conversion over here, and then lastly, um, that gives me, well, if I calculate that, that gives me the 0.3 kip per foot. This beam weighs 300 pounds per foot. Now that I've got that, I can figure out what the factored load is. So for the dead load, I've got that superimposed 0.5 kip per foot plus the 0.3 kip per foot self weight. That gives me a total of 0.8 kip per foot. The live load was given at 1.15 kip per foot. You know, the dead load is less than eight times the live load. And so the controlling load combination is going to be 1.2 times the dead plus 1.6 times the live. So um, if I do that calculation, I get 2.8 kip per foot, which is exactly what we had in class. So now I can check this in, in visual analysis. So when you start visual analysis, here's what you have. Now, probably the first thing you want to do is visual analysis starts off assuming a three-dimensional problem. And, and that really creates a lot more complications than we want most of the time. And so the first thing I want to do, since this is a two-dimensional problem, is go into modify under project settings. Instead of a space frame, change that to a plane frame. Okay. And so now the next thing then is, and let me make the window a little bigger here. Okay. The next thing is, let's go ahead and put the member in. So I go back to create, double click on members. This little dialog comes up. Uh, it was 16 feet long and I'm going to put that in the x direction. The y direction will be zero. Create the member and close. So there it is. Now um, of course you know that uh, it assumes like a w-shaped steel member and so what we're going to do is we're going to change that. So instead of database shape we're going to go to standard parametric. We're going to change this to a rectangle and again we had 12 and 24. Put that in there. And we'll change the material to concrete. And it was 5 KSI. OK, so we've got that in there now. The next thing we should do, let's put the boundary condition on here. At the support here, we've got a reaction. And when I click on that, sorry, whoops. When I click on that, what I'm going to do is come over to the support and make it fixed. So now it's showing you I have X and Y reactions and a moment reaction. And then lastly, let's put the load on it. So let's select the member, right click, apply member loads. Now here's where, this is why I had to split it up because visual analysis assumes that you've got dead and live loads that you're putting in the service loads and then it's gonna do all the, the factoring for you, the load combinations. And so again, now visual analysis will calculate the self weight for you. So go ahead and put this in as a superimposed dead load. So 0 0.5 kip per foot for the dead. Right click again. Apply member load, change this, sorry, change this to the live load case. And it's going to be one point minus 1.15. Okay. All right, so there it is. So those loads are on there. Now, of course, you always want to verify what you put in. So one way to do that is if you click on the load, then over here it changes and it shows you the, the details about it. And sure enough, that is my dead load. You can see that here. It's my dead load minus 0.5. I can change that to live load and again select the member minus 1.15 kip per foot. Okay, that looks good. Now, if you want to display it, this is a little tricky. It took me a little while to find this, but if you go to filter over here and you go to load details on the side here, you can click on show values and there, there the values are. It's displaying on the, on the graph. Oops, let me get rid of it. I accidentally added an extra member and we'll get rid of these nodes. So anyway, so, there, so you can see it there. Um, and if you want to switch, so this is showing you the live load. You can see it up here in this little drop-down menu. That's the live load. And then there's the dead load. Kind of hard to see the way they display it, but there it is. Okay, so that looks good. All right. 
So I think we are ready to go ahead and do the results. So if you go to the results view, it shows you the it shows you the deflected shape. I mean that's kind of handy. But I may want to check other things. So if you look at quick views here, probably the most important thing would be this member, you know, the moment diagram. And there it is. Um, and what it's showing you, it's actually showing you that 102.4 kip feet here, that is the the dead load moment. And you can, if you, again, if you drop down, you can look at a lot of different things. There's the moment due to the live load. Um, but we said, you know, the 1.2 times the dead plus 1.6 times the live is what controls. And so if I put that on there, sure enough, my maximum moment is showing it here, but that's the maximum moment here at the support of minus 358.4 kip feet, which is exactly what we got in class. Okay. The other thing too, you know, if you want to see shear moment diagrams, you can go over here to member graph and you can see it's kind of hard to see, but it says 358.4. You can, you can move your mouse and kind of see what the, what the moment looks like at different points. Again, the maximum moment, the maximum shear is, is 44.8 kip, which is exactly what we got. All right. So now let's, uh, let's see what kind of design it came up with. So if you go to design view, and I'm not sure exactly why it looks like this, but uh, you know the beam is here, the cantilever beam is here. That 0.88, that's the unity check, which means we're using 88% of the capacity. So if you take the factored load MU, you divide by the capacity phi MN, you get 0.88. Now we want to see what the beam design is. And right now it's just showing you the project settings over here in the project manager. So what we need to do is go back to the model view, select the member, there it is. Then go back to design view. And now because that member was selected, you can see the parameters for the member. And down here under details, you can see essentially at the top, you know, where the tension is, they've put uh, six number eights. And remember in class, we said, well, that may not work because it's not going to fit. But so there's probably two rows, not necessarily a good thing. Um, and then they've got some bottom rebar as well. That's kind of for continuity and into making sure that you can tie the reinforcing. So let's change that. What I want to do is I want to change that to what we actually had. So if I click on edit bars there, you can see it gives you a graph. And of course, it just has this kind of standard figure here. And so it's not showing it as a cantilever. But you can you can understand that basically what they're saying here is that they've got three number eights that are going to be here in this first part of the beam where that moment is the highest. And you can see in that region, you need at least 4.24 inches squared. So those three number eights plus the three number eights that are continuous all the way across the beam, that gives you 4.74 square inches, which is more than you need there at the support. In the center, once you get, you know, once I get past this L over three, the moment is, is a lot lower than it is at the support. And so I don't need as much many bars. So these three number eights here, the, the top left, they end and then the top continuous continue on to the end of the cantilever. And you can see there's three more that continue on. But by the time you get to here, the moment is low enough that all you need is 1.86 square inches of steel. So those three number eight should be, should be fine. And then they've got some bottom continuous. And you can see the required is zero because there is, you know, there is no required steel in that tension zone. So that's not a big deal. So let's change this to what our actual requirement was. Now, normally you, you probably would have some bottom continuous bars, but we're just going to take them out so it doesn't impact our results any. And then up here we had three number 11s. We're going to go ahead and take these out. You know, so we're, you know, we really are, we're using more steel than we need. Um, but, but that's fine. So if I click OK, and you can see now it's changed. If I go back in there, you can see that 4.68 is what it's calculating as far as the area for the bars. And it's greater than we need. And I think we calculated about that much steel being needed. So everything looks okay. So now what I'm going to do, you can see actually it did change. If I, it did change here to 0.86. So that's our unity checks. Like I said, we have a little more steel than we need. It's not quite as efficient as the design that the visual analysis came up with, but it should work. So the next thing now, if I want to check to make sure that everything came out okay, I want to do a report. So if you go up here to create reports, go to the design checks report. Okay. And in here you can see this is a really good summary. And this is this is probably so when I ask you in the homework to print up the results, this is what I want to, you to print up. And, and make sure to mark this up. So you know, and in your homework, you know, indicate okay, it's 24 by 12, you know, FC prime equal to 5 KSI. So highlight these, that looks good. 
Uh, you can see the cover was selected based on uh, an interior exposure. Um, beam spacing and column width, I'll come back to that. The beam spacing, don't worry about that. We will. I will talk about this here in a minute, but you can see again the, the, the three number 11. So I would probably highlight that and say, you know, bars look good. And then down here is where it's actually doing the check. Now we haven't talked about shear. We will talk about that later in the semester. But if you look at the uh, flexural check or the flexure check here, which is the moment, you can see that the capacity, so this is phi mn here, it's 393. That's exactly what we got. So this demand here, that's mu, that doesn't look right because we had like 350 something was the, was the demand. Um, 358 kip feet was what we came up with. And it's 336. And, and let me explain why this is happening. And this is why you always have to kind of understand your software. And if you see a number that doesn't look right, you have to investigate this. So I spent a little time, I dug into the documentation. And what happens with visual analysis is it comes back to this assumed column width here. Okay, 12 inches. So they're assuming that the column is 12 inches. They further assume that when I put in those 16 inch or that 16 foot dimension, that that was to the center of the column. You know, and that's, you know, you know, for most projects, that's probably a good assumption that we're going to give dimensions center to center between the columns as far as the length of the beams. So what visual analysis is doing here is we told it that the beam is 16 feet long, but it's assuming that that 16 feet starts in the middle of the column and it goes out. So really the way it's modeled it is that the, the beam is 15 and a half feet past the face of the column. And it's at that face of the column where the moment is critical. That's the moment that you design for. And so I actually went back and checked this. I, I, I looked at the moment diagram. I figured out that if you were, you know, for a 16 foot beam, if you were at half a foot in, then you would have that moment of minus 336.385. So what I'm saying is if I come to the graph here and, you know, visual analysis is assuming, and I'm sorry, this is for dead. So let me change this back to the load combination here. So visual analysis is assuming that the column actually starts here, six inches away from, from the center of the column. That moment right there is that 336. And I verified that. And then again, this just goes to show you've got to, when you're using structural analysis software, you've always got to be able to check, you always got to look at the numbers, understand what they mean, make sure that you understand what's going on. Um, because ultimately it's, you know, it, you're responsible for the design, whether or not to use the software. Every software that's out there will say that, you know, it's provided with no warranty. Engineers have to make sure that they understand what's going on and that, that the results are reasonable. So that said, um, I kind of got on my soapbox there a little bit. This uh, looks like looks like we did it right as far as, you know, the design. Visual analysis has verified it. The capacity is the same. It, it works. Um, so this looks good. So on your homework, I'd want you to do something like this.